Okay. Yeah. I never know who it's going Okay. Um, all right. So. So what are we doing here? We're in the presence of greatness. Right here. Royalty? <laughs> Royalty. Look, she has her own sign. That's true. So if you're checking out on Facebook Live or YouTube Live, yeah. she has her own sign. So First time uh, ever. Nastia Lukin is with us. Hi, Nastia. Hi. How are Thanks you? Thanks for having me. I'm great. Thanks for coming. We were just talking about Boston and how you never thought you'd move here, but now you're here. Yeah. I literally told my now fiance that... Um, you know, wherever our relationship took us, I would never move to Boston. And yeah. somehow a year later, I'm still living here. And yeah. um, no, but it's great. It's um, It's been fun. You know, I think just growing up, I was born in Moscow, but growing up in Texas is obviously very different than the East Coast. So, yeah. I'm, you know, it's still a lot to get used to. I had my first winter. Still don't know how to, like, drive in the snow, but we're working <laughs> on it. It's okay. Uh, now you yeah. live out in the suburbs. You don't really have to. Have yeah, to I know. I'm like, far. it started snowing. I'm like, oh, like, do you mind running to the grocery store? He's like, well, you have a car. You yeah. can go to. You can and go. I'm like, You're like, I don't know. My mom says I can't drive in the snow. <laughs> <laughs> so your parents moved from Moscow to, to Texas? Yeah, well, we actually moved. When I was two and a half, we moved to New Orleans the week okay. of Mardi Gras. Wow. And my parents, like, couldn't speak any English. Yeah. Um, had no idea like where yeah. they were the week of Mardi Gras with like uh -huh. a two and a half year old baby and they were like, What is this country? Yeah. And so that was kinda like the beginning of our journey and we stay there for about a year, mm -hmm. and then um, their dream and their goal was to always open up a gymnastics school. And so they had the opportunity to move to Dallas. Um, gymnastics was pretty big in Texas around mm -hmm. that time, and, so, and still is. But um, so yeah, they were like, okay, well, let's you know go after that dream. And so they moved to Dallas. Yeah. So. And so you were the experiment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> you know, it's funny because they never even wanted me. To do gymnastics, they were both gymnasts, and um, you know my dad competed at the '88 Olympic Games, won four Olympic medals. My wow. mom was a rhythmic gymnast and a world champion, and so as their only child, they were just like, we just want her to be happy. But mm -hmm. for me, I, I truly found my happiness through gymnastics, mm -hmm. and that was like my first passion, my first love, like literally everything about it. I I just wanted to be in the gym, and so you know I think they said especially early on, they're like, well, she also has this, like, strange God-given talent that, mm -hmm. like, you know, as, you know, both of us were gymnasts, so, like, we can't really take that away yeah. from her, but we're never going to push, push her into doing gymnastics. I've detected something. So what? the key is to tell you, don't do it. Don't, do it. Oh, don't yeah, worry about sure. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're not moving to Boston. Don't worry about it. Yeah. We're not moving to Boston. <laughs> that is so uh, funny because yeah. I feel like the, the traditional story <laughs> with the athletes is, like, you know, I don't know. Go, go, I mean, obviously, there's so many examples. Yeah. Like Tiger Woods' dad, right? Like, there's mm -hmm. so many, but it's usually like parents push them, and then the kid grows up and ends yeah. up hating it. Oh, absolutely. Like, yeah, like and I mean, I, we, I see that all the time because my parents own, you know, a gymnastics mm -hmm. school, and, and the kids that you know burn out. It's most of the time it's because of yeah. the parents pushing yep. them too much, mm -hmm. and um, but yeah, I, I truly think that it has to be like your own dream and your goal and, and not just for a sport when you're younger but for anything in life you know I always tell kids like one day when you're gonna have a job you know like you have to really love it because oh, yeah. you're gonna be spending a That's lot of about. time doing it like mm -hmm. I trained seven hours a day six days a week and oh, really? so there wasn't a book you just read that just said, like, <laughs> this is, so this is this is why this is one of the reasons why we wanted to have you is because like so many things that we talk about you know D D David has done five companies mm -hmm. you know and, and so we talk so much about like everybody wants this hack they yep. want like the shortcut the easy right? way out absolutely yeah. and, and and the only thing that you know people the other thing we were talking about this morning though is the answers are always out there like there's no secrets like we can tell you here's what here's the things that we read or did this thing or like mm -hmm. you know the answer is hard work mm -hmm. or it's starting earlier it's mm -hmm. going seven days a week but yep. nobody even though people know the answer it's the reason why this there's a secret to getting a six pack and working yeah, it's working sure. out eating right but <laughs> yeah. everybody knows that <laughs> they want to try the latest diets yeah, to exactly. like quickly get that six pack and mm -hmm. you know yeah. it doesn't work that easily All right, so so you you know i don't i don't want to spend too much time like going back into the past mm -hmm. Like, you know, obviously, uh, five time Olympic yeah. medalist, you won, you know, gold in 2008, yep. all. all around. <laughs> where, where are those medals, by the way? They're in Dallas um, <laughs> at my, my parents' at house. No, just in a all safe. Right, right. Um, oh, right. You know, it's funny because, like, my my dad had four Olympic medals, too, and I never really saw them until the year of the Olympics. And it was kind of actually That's looking crazy. back at it, like, it was the best thing. My, I don't know if they did it intentionally, but growing up not seeing four Olympic medals in front of my yeah. face every yeah. single day, that. like there was enough pressure, you know, that mm -hmm. I put on myself to try to live up to my parents' expectations mm -hmm. and try to live up to like what they achieved because I just wanted to be like them. And so I think like 
not like if you walked into their house like you would never know that like we live there because there's there's one picture from the Beijing Olympics in my dad's office and that's it like you would just you would never know and and your parents are smart yeah and like but I never really like thought about it but I think the older I get and now Mm -hmm. like thinking into the future and like once we have kids too like same with our house like our you know my fiance played hockey at bc won two national titles and our house has like nothing you know like you would never know that we were even athletes so i think why, it's, why did you say that uh, why why are yeah, they smart yeah. because they're they're doing the things that you know it's almost like the neg they're doing the things like they're setting the right circumstances mm. for 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 you to grow yeah. up in and want those things Absolutely. right they're not putting them in their face yeah. they're not you know there's this story of this entrepreneur that that i listened to that um talked about like he was telling a story about the Amish and saying like uh, one of the things that they do there is like they reward the little kids with the reward is doing the work Mm -hmm. and so like (laughs) you know working in the fields and if uh, they do something bad the punishment is you can't come to work today right that's and great. So, I mean that was like it. kind of you know if kind I got your, in trouble yeah. like I couldn't go to gymnastics, gymnastics. and it was like oh my god that's, what like yeah. you know and that's like you love it you didn't want to spite them oh like, yeah like if I got like a bad grade on a spelling test no my punishment was not going to training that day and I like so that's why I made sure to study that's really funny. hard well what? for multiple reasons but you know that was like a big <laughs> I forget what uh my wife and I were watching this video is Jerry Seinfeld and he was mm-hmm. talking about he said one morning like one of my kids comes up to me and he's like daddy are we rich and he goes well I'm rich yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like not the mentality yeah. for yeah. the whole yeah. house which it's I think funny. is so good yeah. alright so you're here because you're going to be speaking at our first annual conference yeah. uh, hyper growth and you know we're super excited obviously I think the thing that's interesting and that you're going to talk about a lot more is basically like You've accomplished all this stuff in your mm-hmm. life, been super successful before the age of 30, and now you're, like, ripping the Band-Aid off and starting over. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, it's interesting because not to kind of go back on my career, yeah. but I think, I, you know, I achieved what I did when I was 18 years old, and it was a lifelong dream. But then four years later, I tried to make a second Olympic team, and on my very best event, the Uneven Bars, I fell face first. And <sighs> I remember laying there you know, on the mat. And all of a sudden, I remember thinking, you're the reigning Olympic all-around champion. All these eyes are on you. Mm -hmm. You know, 20,000 people in the arena, plus millions watching back around the entire world. Um, And you just embarrassed yourself. And Mm -hmm. and you failed. And you're not going to make this Olympic team. And so then I remember thinking, you know, my parents always told me, no matter what you do, you have to finish what you've started. (sighs) And that's like... It's through, like, the disappointment. It's through the failure. And in the moment, I didn't realize, like, how big of a lesson that would be as I kind of move on in my life. But I finished that routine. I landed on my feet. And for the first time in my entire career, I had a standing ovation. And That's like crazy. Even when, when you had one before. I won like... the Olympic all-around gold medal and nobody was on their feet. <laughs> yeah. And so when I had the worst routine of my entire career, mm-hmm. 20,000 people were on their feet. And so, again, in that moment, I had no idea why this was. I was like, you guys sit down. Like, that was really bad. Like, really, yeah. you shouldn't even be really? cheering for me. I was so embarrassed. And then... But that's when you were a true winner, right? Yeah. And, and, the... and I think, like, my entire life... My mentality was always like, people aren't going to support you. People aren't going to love you unless you win the gold medal, unless you come out, you know, on top, unless you, Mm -hmm. you know, are the best student, you make the most money, you make, you know, like success. Mm -hmm. What is success? Mm -hmm. You know, and for me, that's kind of what I defined it as. And so that moment for me has just really kind of proved to me that, you know, it's, there's so many parts of success and and winning that medal. Yes, that was, Mm -hmm. you know, a piece of success, but you can have, you know, more pieces of success and you can move on from that. And so that's kind of what I'm trying to do is not look back at my life. And as you said, you know, like when I'm, you know, I'm not yet 30, but when I'm 40, 50, 60 years old, I don't want to think that the only thing that I did while it was amazing was, you know, win that gold medal at 18. So so you don't want to be like the rest of your life. You're on the speaking circuit talking about 2008. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. And, you know, and it's like I do do speaking engagements. And, and so I've really at first right after I won, like that's what my speak, what right. speech was about. Right. It was like winning that gold medal. And I, I recently did one last week in South Dakota. And it was just like I've really altered, you know, my story and my mentality because it's like and that's what I say when I get up there. I'm like, you know, I'm sure you're all thinking I'm going to tell you about, you know, how I won that gold Blue medal, medal. my yeah. journey to becoming a five time Olympic big medalist but that's not who I am Mm -hmm. you know it was I feel like for so long I let that define who I was and I realized like 
those medals, yes, they're mine and they're sitting in a safe in Texas, but they don't define me as a person. Mm-hmm. You were talking about earlier, like after that, you went back to college. Yeah, and you just which was hard. Started, <laughs> started over again. Yeah, it was so hard. I mean, but I think like that's what I wanted because I felt like in the moment for 22 years of my life, gymnastics defined who I was as a person. And I had no idea what my passions were, who I was as a person, what I wanted to do. And so I think by moving to New York, going to NYU, just meeting so many amazing people and, you know, taking classes that I was like super interested in, even the ones that I really wasn't (laughs) interested in, but you had to do, it just really um, opened up like my mind to so many different things and, and really made me realize that there is life beyond gymnastics and sports. Mm -hmm. So, so what is that for you now? Like, give us more about what you're up to. Well, it actually has to do with gymnastics and sports right now. But, you know, I think um, so my fiance and I, we've both been so lucky to have such amazing mentors in our life throughout our life, whether, you know, for me, my dad obviously was a huge mentor of mine because not only was, you know, he Olympic champion himself, he also then coached me um, and then was, you know, a very successful business. We we, we Um, talk about that so so much. much Mentors, the importance of mentors. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And and, and specifically like mentors and and role models. Yes, exactly. And so this is what our new business is all about is um, so it's right now it's um, we're building basically communities and it's an application it's called grander Um, so really about like being grander um, in your life and so We've started in the gymnastics community because obviously Mm -hmm. that's it just makes sense. (laughs) Um, And we're really trying to perfect this um, community right now and then take it across different verticals. But um, it's myself and five other of my Olympic and World Championship teammates. And we're basically the quote unquote mentors of this community. And then we have a community feed and they're asking us questions. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I think social media has just become this like huge thing. You know, mm-hmm. when I competed at the Olympics, I didn't have a Twitter. I didn't have an Instagram. It's I was going to ask you, it's crazy. how did you get so many Instagram followers? Yeah. I need that. Can you just mention? You have like a question for yeah. him? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I think like I did Dancing with the Stars, you know, the yeah. Olympics, like oh. not mm-hmm. when I competed, but like after. after. And yeah. But anyways, like I feel like there's kind of like this gap between social media and these in-person events that, yep. you know, we're able to go see. They're very rare. You know, at times they're expensive mm-hmm. for families or for kids or, you know, for these companies, whatever it is. And there's no in-between. And so I, yeah. I also feel like for 22 years I gained, you know, a lot of gymnastics knowledge. Mm-hmm. And now I can't do anything with it because yeah. I don't do gymnastics anymore. It's not mm-hmm. something I use. And so why not try to you know, kind of carry that on and inspire that next generation of athletes and that Mm -hmm. next generation um, of these females, these women that are going to be the next generation of our world. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that's kind of what it's really about and and, and kind of that whole message of female empowerment. Like we had this one girl, I think she was about 10. She posted a video last week and saying, you know, she was really getting body shamed by some of her teammates. And Mm -hmm. I was just like... Like, looking at it, I'm like, first of all, that's crazy. You know, Mm -hmm. a 10-year-old and her teammates are, you know, body shaming Mm -hmm. her. And so I wrote back to her and I was – and she was saying, you know, she doesn't have, like, the typical body for gymnastics. And I'm like, talk about not the typical body for gymnastics because I was always, like – you know, quote unquote, like too skinny, not strong enough. I couldn't run as fast. I couldn't jump as high. Like, I was like – all odds were against me to win that gold medal because Mm -hmm. I just wasn't that, you know, classic, like, gymnast body. I wasn't strong. I wasn't a lot of things. And so I told her, I was like, you know, it's so important to be comfortable in your own skin and to be confident in your own skin and to also stop listening to everybody else. And it's like, it's so hard to do Mm because it's like it's easier when you're on the other side telling somebody. But, and then, like, it was cool because I commented and then, like, 10 of the community members commented and they were like, you know, stand up for yourself. And it was just, oh, it was awesome. this conversation. Yeah. It was like, it was really special. So yeah, so I mean, that's kind of what we're building is, you know, the importance of having these role model and mentors in your life. And now as Matt and I have moved on into the business world, we have mentors in the business world mm-hmm. that we can talk to. And so it's, it's not necessarily just having an athlete that you look up to or a gymnast, know. you know. It's and in all areas of your life. Every single part, marriage and business mm-hmm. and, you know, so many different um, if aspects. If you only knew so. how often we talk about this, right? I this love is it. the idea behind, <laughs> I love it. Yeah. behind the podcast and behind the conferences around this kind of growth in all these areas and it's so important 
uh, to have those role models around you. And I, you know, the, the amazing thing to me is like every successful person I talk to in any realm, whether it's business or sports or what have you, uh, the, it's always the same patterns. Yeah. Role models, yep. mentors, mm-hmm. right? Putting in that hard work, someone, yeah. hard work, someone telling them or people telling them you're not the right shape, you're not the right size, you don't have what it takes, right? It's, yeah. it's no, always it's the so same true. story. Like we've, I've been just reading a lot of books and listening to a lot of podcasts lately mm-hmm. about like, you know, now successful like companies, whether it's like Kate Spade yep. or, you know, like different, <laughs> different brands and different companies. And it's like, the commonality between every single one that I've read or listened to has been a failure in the beginning. Yep. Crazy, how much this is so. <laughs> really crazy. Yeah. You know, and it's like, or a failure to the sense of like, I literally either had to go 110 percent all in, yep. or I was just gonna have to give it all give up, it up and throw it off the yep. table but, and start over. Yeah, but this so, is why people clapped when you fell, yeah, right? Because yeah, it's like exactly because it's what we talk about. The difference. Everyone falls, but winners get up. Yep when they fall, yeah. right? And yep. that's when they you were the true winner. Too. Yeah. The other flip side of that, which I learned from him is, uh, you know, there's role models, right? Mm-hmm. And so there's also reverse role models, mm-hmm. which is basically like, sometimes you might not, you might have imposter syndrome or think mm-hmm. that you shouldn't be involved with these yeah. people, right? And then you go to an event or you go and do something and you realize that all of these other crazy successful people don't feel that much different than you. You're yeah. like, wait a second. Yeah. Like, Oh, we're we're so similar, and that is such a been like such an unlocking thing for us. Yeah, I think it's it's interesting because like last week I I spoke I did a keynote at it was a women's business conference, and I'm mm-hmm. looking out into there was like a thousand um fe- you know business owners, and um I, I remember being like a little nervous because I'm just like you know like they all have kind of what I'm wanting to have yeah. soon like a business, <laughs> yeah. and I'm like like why are they gonna listen to me you know mm-hmm. and crazy. so and I remember like after I I finished like. I had so many people come up to me and say, like, that's exactly what we needed to hear. Like, and I was just like, wait, what? Wait, you yeah. know? Like, and so I was kind of <laughs> like, you would okay, teach me. Yeah. yeah. And and actually something that I always share too, and and kind of has really applied with me throughout my entire life was when my mom told me when I was little was that we're all going to have bad days, whether it's in gymnastics, business, mm-hmm. a marriage, whatever it is. And it's so important to never quit on a bad day. Mm-hmm. And Man, I remember, parents, parents, <laughs> I know, ridiculous. I, owe, I owe my parents quite a lot, yeah. but I remember coming home from the gym and just like crying and being like, I quit. I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. And my mom was always like, you know, like, we're not going to push you into this, but you can quit, but not today. Mm-hmm. You can have to go back to the gym until you have a good day. And after a good day, you can quit. And so, you know, sometimes that would take me three days, five days a week. And then, you know, moms know best. So I'd come home after a good day. She's like great, we'll enroll you back into public school, we'll find mm-hmm. another activity that you like. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I never said I wanted to quit. <laughs> you know? so we it's need like, to get your parents on this power. podcast. Right? Yeah. 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 But we talk about, yeah. I mean, it's, 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 it's like the, you know, we're in startups and so it's, it's yeah. the same, it's like there's every, you know, Monday could be amazing, Tuesday could be terrible. Oh, yeah. Wednesday could be totally. amazing, Thursday could be terrible. And so if you react too short, like yeah. in the short term, mm-hmm. you know, yes. we always say like we're in it for the long run regardless. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. And then like that's kind of I feel like what this business is like for us too because, you know, for for me outside of like building my personal brand mm-hmm. and like that business and working with sponsors and keynote speeches and all that, which has been great and I'm very fortunate for that. You know, I wanted to do something – that brought me as much passion as I once had for gymnastics mm-hmm. because I feel like ever since I finished gymnastics, I haven't quite found something that every single day, while yes, it's a struggle some mm-hmm. days and not all days are great, but like you're in it for that long run and you you have this goal and you have this dream and this passion and while everything else, like I do enjoy doing those things, but it's like they're one-off things and mm-hmm. every day is different and you're like, okay, one day I'm talking to kids, the next day I'm talking to business women mm-hmm. and you know, so... It's been really cool to like, you know, we're kind of starting the round of, you know, investing and, you know, mm-hmm. meeting with investors and, um, you know, and it's like I, I was just telling Matt yesterday, like, I'm so used to success kind of being like in my own hands yep. where like, you know, like you make it happen. If yeah. you want to like be better at the balance beam, you have to do more beam routines, yeah. you know? And so it's like sometimes that's not always the way it works, um, mm-hmm. starting a new business. Yep. And so I'm like, I feel like that's like my worst quality right now is I get so frustrated sometimes when like 
if people don't understand or they're like, you know, I just, yeah. I'm not sure how that could be scalable. And mm-hmm. we're like, this is how it could be scaled. You know, and it's like, <laughs> you want to like, and so I'm just, I'm really learning um, a lot about it. So it's been really fun. That's amazing. We have a lot of investors who listen to this show here. So you have to reach out and yeah. check out right Grander. Now, a check. Yeah, yeah, right now, see a check. Let's, a big we check. Know. there's Let's a lot go. of them out here. Yeah. yeah. Listening. No, yeah. it's, it's been something, fun. Yeah. Something you said there, which is so important is like you have to love it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is why you hate when people talk about work life balance so much, right? Mm-hmm. Because the only way is you know it's gonna be hard, you know it's yeah. gonna take time. And so if you don't actually love doing it every day, it's gonna don't be so it. damn hard don't to do. Don't do it. it. Yeah, yeah, I absolutely agree. And it's it's funny because you know, a lot of people are also like, you know, obviously Matt and I are engaged and, you know, we're starting this business together and it's like People are kind of like, well, that's crazy. that's crazy. Yeah, how <laughs> yeah, do you, you do that? Yeah, you get a lot of questions about that. Yeah, we've gotten quite a few. I would say like it's a 50-50. Like fi- 50% of the people like ask something or they're like kind of scared to ask. Yeah. But they like try to bring it up and then like the other 50 are just like whatever. Like we don't really care. But mm-hmm. it's really funny because both of our parents, like his parents started a business together, still work together, still married. Like yeah. same with my parents. And like – we grew up like like that, and mm-hmm. so to us, that's not weird. We saw that you know our parents worked together and made oh, yeah. a very successful business. You know, both completely opposite ends of like the types of business, but um, you know, I think that we're both very driven. And like, yeah, obviously, like any like coworkers, you're gonna disagree about things. But I think at the yeah. end of the day, when you have like that same vision and that same end goal, which is why it worked for my dad and I when we were training because Mm -hmm. my dad was my coach and people always said how is that how does that work like how do you come home to that and like to the coach yeah (laughs) and I was like I don't know like he knows me more than like any other coach could ever get to know me as an athlete or Mm -hmm. you know obviously as a daughter and so our end goal was the same. We both wanted the same thing. Mm-hmm. And, like, sure, there were times where we were frustrated and we didn't want to talk to each other or we <laughs> butt heads because we were, like, so, both so, so stubborn and we're yeah. the same person. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, like, we worked hard and, and we made it happen. Mm-hmm. So. so I want a couple a couple things I want to just go go deeper on, like, more, you know, more more quickly to base on what you're doing now. Like, what what is a – do you still have – like, you're speaking, you're doing a bunch of stuff, so yep. you're all over the place – do you still have like morning routines, workout routines, habits yeah. that you're trying to stick to every day? Like what's a, what's a typical morning? And the yes. reason I ask is people love, the people that listen to this, like mm-hmm. love hearing about, you know, what do you do in the morning? What, what happens yes. when you get up? What times your alarm go off? And- mm-hmm. Okay. So, um, Matt, my fiance, he's, I thought I was an early riser and mm-hmm. he's like a really early riser. <laughs> what, is, what does that mean? Like he's... 4.35. No. Yeah. Well, this yeah. Is a, uh, before I... We're not married. Yeah. <laughs> before, yeah. before I even like have looked at my phone, I have like 16 you, messages yeah. from my <laughs> yeah. Every channel. Ping, 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 I, oh, ping, ping, I do the yeah. same to my agents too. And they're <laughs> just See, like... That's yeah. what, it is. what? Like He sent, he sent me this 6.08 6. this morning. Yeah, yeah. Nasty is coming today. I hope you got notes. I yeah. hope you're ready. Oh, I'm yeah. like, I'm ready. You're like, I'm on it, but I'm the same way. I'm like, um, we need to get this deal done. We need, like, yeah. before 7 a.m. And mm-hmm. the, the, it, I'm He's sure already, it drives Okay, crazy. so Matt's already been up for a couple hours. So, yeah, I'm trying to – I'm slowly trying to get on a schedule. Mm-hmm. Today I got up at 5.30. Um, we went to – we always try to get in a morning workout just mm-hmm. because I feel like the day gets ahead of you. And if you're yep. not going to do it in the morning, it's not happening. So we always talk about the only time – nobody's asking you to get a drink at 6.15 in the exactly. morning. Exactly. No. And I feel like it's so important to take time for yourself mm-hmm. um, in the morning. So what we try to do – is actually before we go on our morning chain of emails we like put our phones down for a second and we you know we'll have our coffee and we'll read whatever book we're reading for you know whether it's we have 30 minutes that day or we have five to ten minutes whatever it is whether you're reading a book you're listening to a podcast something to just kind of like stimulate your brain a little bit instead of social media straight Mm out um and then we'll have a juice. So have you heard of Juicero? Oh, yeah. You have okay. one? Yes, yeah. we have one. Um, <laughs> shout out because they did send us one. So I'm very ah, nice. Juicero. They don't, yeah. so they, don't, they don't ship to Massachusetts yet. But, yeah, um, yeah we, got, we got very lucky. So, That's awesome. Um, so, yeah, we have a juice and we do bulletproof coffee. Yep. Um, and then today we went to Orange Theory. Um, mm-hmm. so Is we, that where you work out? Yeah, we did a class today. Um, so we try to mix it up between Orange Theory, Soul Cycle, or we'll just do like a mat. He's is great at putting workouts together so we have like an at home like basement gym um so we'll do that and he's like this is what you're doing today yeah (laughs) you kind of said that like matt 
is kind of you know like that's yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well like if I tried to put something together I'm like okay some squats some abs yeah, yeah. <laughs> because I feel like my whole life I was coached mm -hmm. and so now like I'm still trying to get out of that mentality of like someone constantly have, having to tell me what to do yeah, like yeah. I'm like I'll even ask him I'm like wait so what do I need to do today? Yeah. <laughs> and he's like can't you figure it out yourself yeah. no, just um, go sweat for 40 minutes, yeah, 40 minutes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah so that's kind of our morning routine and then you know we'll come back and um, kind of get ready for the day you know depending on what it is like later mm -hmm. today we have another meeting with an investor so I'll hop over um, there after here and then we, we're leaving for LA Miami New York and LA um, for two weeks we leave on Monday so mm -hmm. um, I'm working with the LA 2024 Olympic bid nice. so yeah. really excited about that they have um, the IOC coming in next week mm -hmm. to kind of do the venue tour a couple things yeah. what time did you go to bed last night um, to get up at 5.30 like 10 ish, okay. yeah. 10 ish, yeah. Yeah. And the other thing I was going to ask you is we, so, I mean, everything you said there is like we talk about that every day. Every right? day. The, the time in the morning yeah. is the only time. Yep. Sure. We, we both talk about routines. no phones before yeah. tell her reading. Your, tell her stuff. your morning routine. Sure. It, it is, uh, which I talk about all the time. I get up around 5, 5.30. Mm -hmm. uh, the first thing I do, it's about being intentional. So the first thing I do is I do yoga in the morning, like um, 15 minutes. Then I read. Mm -hmm. Then my son or my daughter is up. Yep. The coffee, right? And I was mostly bulletproof before. And then after that, then I finally, you know, spend some time actually checking my phone. Yeah. And sometimes I do like uh, this thing called box breathing which is like this, like, um, you basically just do this pattern of, like, let's say, 10-second yeah. pauses. Done, yeah, he does, Matt's done it? does some of the breathing exercise. Yeah. I haven't gotten into it yet, but he that's went awesome. to, like, a Tony Robbins. Yes, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, and so he's, you know, does the cold plunge. Yeah. You know, he does a lot of those things that I can't quite get into, the get, cold plunge yet. Yeah, but, especially um, in Boston, Boston yeah. cold plunge. <laughs> I know, the winters, I'm like, you are crazy. crazy like, yeah. I'm like, I, I, I love the, you, I but. I tried the Wim Hof, like, 10 seconds in the shower. He couldn't cold. do that. Co yeah, I know. I'm like, like making hot. I'm, like, I'm trying to enjoy this shower. Yeah. <laughs> Next yeah thing no, I know, I'm, exactly. I'm in there for 40 minutes. Leah's banging on. Get the hell out of here. Oh, and then the phone thing, something else at night, which isn't a morning routine, but mm -hmm. um, we've kind of made it so. We're not allowed to have our phones in the bedroom. Yeah, we yeah, just same. the same thing. Yeah. yeah, and like at first I was like, wait, what? Yeah, like what I need to be calls? on Instagram until yeah. my eyes shut, you know? And <laughs> it's like, we no, literally... you actually don't. Those Instagram posts are still going to be there in the morning. Morning, don't and worry maybe, about it. We just did the same thing, my wife and I. What, what do you do? You feel like you feel different? Like you? Feel I do. Different? Yeah, I think it was it was tough, like to like mentally switch off because mm -hmm. I was like literally on my phone till like my eyes would shut, you know. And so now it's like we leave our phones like plugged in in the bathroom or like wherever and then um, it also helps you get out of bed because your fear alarm yeah. <laughs> is somewhere else it's really yeah. annoying to yeah. like get up and go back and get up and go just back get up so, angry. just get up so you set the alarm out there yeah oh that's tough that's tough yeah. I just got like a little six dollar like digital no. thing like, no because that I gets you that. up like it, it makes uh, you get up step it up dude let's go <laughs> man it's yeah. your next step um, yeah, just get out there. And so you're out there now trying to raise investment for your company, yeah. Grander. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. how's that so going? It's, it's been good. I mean, we literally, this has been our first week um, okay. of really like actively doing it just because we were finishing. Um, so we basically launched in October, but with more of like a private um, mm -hmm. pilot just yeah. because we really wanted to learn a little bit more and instead of just like announcing it to the public yeah. and like you know we really wanted to figure everything out and so um so yeah it's been it's been really fun and we've done some like what we call like offline experiences where we'll do events at some local gyms or that's we've cool. traveled a little bit but just to kind of give that offline experience to the app because that's what we felt like you know we do these events and then you're almost left like okay i'm probably never gonna see you speak to you or hear from you again you yeah. know and so it's like to kind of like continue that and like make it yeah. kind of like a cycle where you can like still kind of stay in touch and um so yeah so it's been fun and yeah i'm, I'm learning quite a lot about you know the investment oh, yeah. um, i'm side happy of to talk about and, that offline i'd oh, yeah. love to help you get yeah, investment. yeah 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 we'd love Let's that see. obviously maybe, maybe we'll be your first investor know. yes absolutely uh, yeah, we'll <laughs> yeah, i've written a couple checks so that's a good just idea. a few take yeah. them up on that <laughs> I, I absolutely will oh, yeah. <laughs> don't forget to give me your business card well nasia is awesome so awesome to have you yeah. have you here and you know we're super excited just i can already tell the vibe today is going to be, be insane amazing in september yeah with you know a thousand yeah. people that are going to be hungry to learn this i'm so stuff, excited so. yeah thanks no, for including me oh this was fun no offense dave go 
but this room feels a lot better now. Damn. <laughs> it just should. A lot better. Yeah. yeah. Of course it yeah, should. This upgrade. Is, I'm yeah. just excited because we didn't talk about any of this stuff before. You know, we I don't know if Nastia wants to do DC Nastia show. Oh, she does? I'm oh. out. I'm out. <laughs> Wow. Wow. Yeah, okay. yeah. You know what? That's okay. That's okay. I'll be known as the guy who got us to this point yeah. and then was replaced yeah. and we're good. Okay. You started it. It, it takes somebody yeah. to start the, it off. And a wrong. different person to scale it. Look, don't get, yeah. me, wrong. To scale it. Don't yeah. get me wrong. You both are, you both are great. Yeah. Uh, you would have to do all the prep work, though. Oh, oh, all oh okay. That's all right. That's yeah. okay. I'm learning how to do yeah. that, yeah. you know? Oh, before yeah. we go, um, number one book that you've recommended or like yeah. given out to somebody here. It's one that I read um, before the Olympics, The Secret. Um, yeah. And I just, I feel like. So affirmations. There's, yeah, I feel like it's really about, it sounds so cliche, obviously, but mm-hmm. like really that positive thinking, not even just like as an athlete, but as a person. Like if you're going to attract negative things into your life or, you know, keep asking the question of like, why me? Why this? Yep. Why can't I do this? Like, nothing great is going to happen. And um, just quick tidbit, like on The Secret, I I created a vision board and um, about six months before the Olympics and the Beijing Olympic Committee had just printed off the Olympic medals and Mm so, um, or released them. So I printed off gold, silver, bronze, put it on my vision board. And the week before I left for Beijing, my mom dug out my dad's Olympic medals in the attic and hung the gold one on my board. Oh, get out of here. And it was like the first time. And it was like looking at like a picture of like a medal I could potentially have have in the next few weeks and like my dad like a real, real one, one yeah and like putting those together it kind of just like made it seem so that's real. a movie moment and, that's a and movie. It, yeah she put um the day i left she put a card um right by my vision board and, and i got it the day i got back from the olympics and it said congratulations i'm so proud of you <laughs> and obviously not knowing what was going to happen yeah. but you know she had this feeling and um so yeah i, I just like I just, like, I really believe in, like, believing Mm -hmm. um, and no matter what, through failures Mm -hmm. or through falling literally or figuratively, you have to finish what you've started. You have to pick yourself up and... If you work hard and if you believe in yourself, anything is possible. That's amazing. When you have uh, kids, you need to have a parenting book with your parents. Yeah. It's going to be amazing. No, that's – I know. My dad's, my dad's actually told uh, my mom and I that we need to do that because, like, oh, yeah. you know, it's Huge. like my my mom didn't coach. Well, she was my first coach, but she was, like, too much of a mom. She was, I'm like, I'm tired. She's like, go sit down. Yeah. <laughs> my dad's like, yeah, she's going to get real far. Yeah, yeah. You're going to keep <laughs> but, going. But um, she really was, like, the support side to the team. Like, mm-hmm. We called ourselves like Team Lucan, and it was like this triangle. It was like me being the athlete, my dad being the coach, and she was the one that held it all together. together. And without her, you know, we we absolutely wouldn't have made it. So wow, that's Love a book it. I want to read. Yeah, awesome. Thanks for coming <laughs> Thank in. Thank you so much Take for having us me. Out of here. All right, <laughs> everyone knows what what to do. Five star reviews only. Check with Apple. Let's see if we can get we, six stars we now. We only get five star. Reviews. We only get five star reviews, yeah. right? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. They the people, they, lo- they only leave five Can stars. Can I leave a review? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Some people and try to leave six-star reviews. So yeah. five stars only. <laughs> and I want you to go check out the biggest Instagram that I've ever seen. Ever. Ever. <laughs> Gazillion followers, yep. I think, right Gazillion. now. What's your Instagram handle? It's Nasty Lucan. So N A S T I A L I U K A N. Go check it out. Yeah. Go check out Grandeur. And if you're an investor, hit hit Nasty up. Yeah. Give her some money. <laughs> Write big checks only. <laughs>